Hello everyone. I've received a lot of questions about my game settings, so I've decided to make a video to share them with you. This video will be in two parts. First, I'll quickly show you all of my settings, and then I'll go back and explain what some of the settings do and why I chose them. Please keep in mind, my sensitivity will not feel the same on each device. I found I had to lower it significantly when I played on another phone. So, with that being said, here's my settings. Now starting with vibration feedbacks, I do not use them, but it is up to you if you want to or not. Free camera, as I hope you know already, allows you to look around while keeping your turret in the same position. I have it slightly higher than my camera sensitivity to allow me to look at my surroundings faster. Moving on to movement, I prefer a fixed joystick which gives you the greatest control over your combat vehicle, as well as providing predictability. Some people prefer arrows, but it comes with the loss of full control. Track targets. Turning this to manual, you will get a new button in your HUD layout which you can then turn on or off. Though leaving this button on can be very useful against moving targets as the game will adjust your aim for you. I always leave this off due to the unpredictable nature of it. Camera rotation assist may sound confusing, but simply, it makes it so you can be able to look around quicker with less thumb movement. I keep this off because of the inconsistency in the speed at which the camera rotates. Show move direction and grass and tank sight should hopefully both be pretty self-explanatory. Fixed armor piercing indicator, on the other hand, will add an additional unnecessary crosshair on your screen. For less confusion, it is best to just disable this setting so that the bullet drop and armor piercing indicator combines into one crosshair. Similarly, it is best to disable reticles as well. Though many players prefer this setting enabled as it shows the bullet drop and the crosshair more easily, because there is only an arcade mode for War Thunder Mobile, there is already a bullet drop indicator, which is why I choose to turn off reticles. Unless a realistic mode is added, I suggest this setting to remain disabled. Auto zoom on target selection. There are some pro and cons having this turned off, but because the pros outweigh the cons, I keep this turned on. For the pros, you don't need to worry about zooming in and out as this setting does it for you. And it also gives you some very useful aim assist that is not too overpowered as in the case with the track target setting. Turning auto zoom off, however, will completely take away any form of aim assist. For the cons, it will unzoom for you when an enemy you are looking at gets destroyed, which can be very annoying, especially when you have a vehicle with a very quick reload and you're trying to destroy multiple vehicles at the same time. Another con is when you are trying to combat an enemy at close range. Sometimes the zoom will already be at max zoom, which could again screw up your aim. For aircraft controls, use cursor. Never ever use stick, only psychopaths use stick. Unless you enjoy making flying harder than it already is, then by all means, go ahead and use stick control. Fixed aim cursor. What this setting does is it fixes your camera to the center of the screen rather than following the cursor. Personally, I find this setting to make aiming harder and makes it more difficult to lead your shots. I leave this setting disabled. Moving on, additional flight controls. Enabling this will give you these arrow buttons, which will allow you better control of your aircraft. It is especially useful when you find yourself flying upside down and need an easy way to flip yourself or be used to simply evade enemy aircraft. Now for the aircraft sensitivities. This one here is your main sensitivity for your cursor. Essentially, how sensitive you want your aim to be while in an aircraft. Cursor sensitivity in zoom mode is the same thing, but, well, for while in zoom, of course. Now, the camera speed sensitivities you will not want too low. If it is set to a low number, your camera will react slowly to your cursor being moved. Here is some gameplay during a time I had it set to low. You also do not want to set it to 100%, or the camera will snap to your cursor, which can be quite nauseating. And finally, free camera sensitivity, which is, of course, the sensitivity when using free camera. Continuous turning mode. I recommend to never enable this setting because to do so, controlling your aircraft will become much more difficult. With it on, 
you have to continuously move your thumb in the direction you want to fly to control your aircraft. Not only that, but you also lose your ability to look around at the same time. Honestly, I can't even think of a reason why you would prefer to have this setting on. Aileron's control by Gyro. Gyro, for those who are unaware, allows you to use the movement of your whole device as a controller. There are a lot of mobile games that utilize Gyro, especially in games where you can steer a vehicle or reduce a gun's recoil. In the case of War Thunder Mobile, having this enabled, Gyro can be used to control the roll of your aircraft by the tilt of your device. However, due to additional aircraft controls, I suggest keeping this setting off and instead use the arrows. On top of this, it will take a lot of time and practice to fully master using Gyro, which is further reason why I suggest keeping this disabled. And at last, target lock on the tap. Basically, what this setting does is it automatically and involuntarily locks onto air targets for you. I prefer to keep this setting turned off so I can instead manually lock onto targets myself with this button in your HUD layout. However, you will rarely catch me actually utilizing this. And that concludes my setting video. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer all of them. Other than that, thanks for watching.